So the last step is multiples evaluation. Uh, there's other types of evaluation you can do. There's lots of other things we can do to make sure that our analysis is right, but this is really the fastest way. Um, you know, it's very simple. You've seen it if you've ever thought about buying a house or you've seen your parents buy a house. Uh, it's, it's that price per square foot, right? You're looking in the neighborhood, you're seeing what house is similar to mine, and uh, how much did that sell for? How many square feet is it? So it's worth, you know, in Boston, $600 a square foot. Um, and then you go to your house and you say, okay, well, if, I, if it's $600, $600 per square foot and my house is 1,000 square feet, you know, it's $600,000 for my house is a reasonable value. We're doing the same exact thing here, except we're saying, all right, what you know, metric can we make for these other companies that are like ours and how can we apply it to our company? There's lots of uh, multiples you can do, but since we're only looking for a stock value right now, we're trying to see if you know we can buy the stock, like oh, a couple of shares, not the whole thing. Um, we're going to use the price to equity multiple, uh, sorry, price to earnings multiple. It's one of the most popular multiples to use for this purpose. Okay, so with multiples analysis, the first thing you need to do is pick good comparables. You need to pick companies that are similar to our company so that we know when we're getting a metric for it, it's right. I mean, if we're trying to sell a you know, a small apartment, we wouldn't use a square foot for a factory as our good metric, right? Those are completely different products. Those are completely different sizes. Uh, so businesses are good comparables if they have similar products. You know, we're a restaurant, so we want to find comparable uh, companies that are restaurants, probably uh, aimed at sports. Uh, we want similar margins. Uh, we want, you know, similar geographies. Like we don't want to compare a Chinese Buffalo Wild Wings to an American Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, similar size that can affect a growth prospect. So if you know McDonald's is in every single corner, or Starbucks is in every single corner in the world, and our company is only in one state, the growth prospects are different. Uh, so we want to make sure they're somewhat similar size, and then similar strategy or structure, right? For the price to earnings multiple, the debt actually does matter to us. So because this is post debt, this is post debt money. Earnings is after you've paid out interest. So we care how risky the business is. If the if the business is you know levered up has you know, uh, uh, you know, 10 times EBITDA, uh, 10 times debt to EBITDA or something, um, it might not be a good comparable because that debt business is much more risky. And you've seen that in the Khan Academy videos. Okay, so um, based on these, I looked up a little bit about Buffalo Wild Wings competitors. They don't have a lot of pr uh, public competitors. There are private competitors, but we don't have any information for those because they don't have to report. So I picked two. This is not big enough for a sample size. You really need a sample size, otherwise you're likely to make mistakes. But for the sake of example, we're going to use both of those. Uh, I filled out Buffalo Wild Wings statistics for these four, you know, revenue, debt, market value, and net income, so that we can gauge relative size. We don't want a company that's 20 times bigger. Uh, Dave & Buster's I filled out, and we'll do Chipotle together. Chipotle, I wouldn't consider a great comparable because uh, it's quick service. There's no sports entailed. I don't think they serve alcohol. Maybe they do, but no, it's not a main portion of their business, uh, but, you know, it's food, it's popular, it's trendy, we'll, we'll go with Chipotle for now. I use, don't laugh, but I use Yahoo Finance uh, still um, for, for this purpose anyway, and I'm going to just go in and do each of these things. So revenue, you know, it's 4570, and you have to make sure that all of these are in the same units, otherwise you're going to be messed up. Uh, the multiple will take into account the units, but I like to do it all in millions just to be safe. Uh, debt, they have zero debt too. That's good. That's a, that's a comparable uh, market value. Sorry, uh, market cap. Market cap is one five six hundred. So that's a pretty big. You know, this company is a lot bigger than us, um, which would be a red flag for me if I was really investing in this company. But let's see where we end up. Uh, net income is five hundred twenty-nine million. Okay, so our multiple we've done, what we've done is we've divided our total market value, that's the to sum of all the price of all our stock, that's the price, and the net income to come up with a multiple of 33 times. This is 29 times for Chipotle, so our average is uh, 31 times. So if we multiply Buffalo Wild Wings earnings times 31, we should come up, if, if our comparables are right and they're accurate and they're well valued, we should come out with an approximate uh, number. So I took the Buffalo Wild Wings earnings per share. We got that from uh, the 10K or we ran a calculation here on our shareholders' equity statement. It's right there. 
Um, so that's the earnings per share this year. And then we multiply those things together and we get a stock price, target price of $155.77. Now, if you remember our DCF value, discounted cash flow value came out with 168. Our multiples value here is 155. So we're actually, you know, pretty close in line here with the multiples valuation. Um, so I'd say, you know, the target price for this company is probably based on, you know, almost no knowledge of the company is, is about 160 bucks. And lo and behold, it's currently trading at $158. Now, I didn't do any special tweaking of these numbers. I didn't pick comps, comparables, companies, comps. I didn't pick comps with the intention of getting a number close to it. I just picked two companies that I thought were kind of similar. For the, for the discounted cash flow, um, you know, I just picked you know, a growth rate and a weighted average cost of capital that I thought was you know, reasonable. We can get better answers for those. And for our you know, assumptions here, I just took averages of historicals and I took, you know, decreasing sales over time so that we could level it out. I didn't do anything crazy special to get this nice of a grouping. And this, this, it doesn't always come out like this, but I can be at this point reasonably certain that I don't need to do six months of research on this company. I know it's kind of fairly valued. It's probably worth about 160 bucks. If the stock tanks um, and goes down to 120, 110, um, I might start looking at this as a real investment, and then I would go out and do all that work trying to figure out what my assumptions are and if I should uh, dig deeper into what the actual pros growth prospects are. But, um, you know, this company is pretty fairly valued, it seems like, and, you know, we've done, you've just done your hopefully first uh, stock analysis. You've done all of the steps involved in, in, do, in getting a mechanical model, not a vetted model. I mean, you don't have good assumptions, but you've got a mechanically working model with a gut check of the multiples valuation. Um, and so congratulations. Uh, if this was an acquisition or merger, you would wanna do um, an EBITDA enterprise value multiple. This is a market uh, value multiple, right? Price is just market value. It's the sum of all the equity. If we were buying a company, we would also buy its debt. So we would wanna use an enterprise value multiple. So enterprise to EBITDA is a very popular multiple to use for um, for acquisitions. Uh, enterprise value to EBIT is also very popular. Enterprise value to revenue is not great unless the company doesn't have uh, EBIT or EBITDA to speak of. So it's a younger company. Um, but those are all you know, advanced, more advanced topics. You've just completed your, uh, your basic three statement model, multiple valuation, discounted cash flow. This is really, really advanced stuff for an undergraduate to complete. It's uh, what you will be spending a lot of time doing as a financial analyst in a bank your first couple of years. Uh, so congratulations again, and I hope you enjoyed the series.